Well, friends, we want to thank all of you for tuning in tonight to our midweek Bible study prayer here at Grace Baptist Church. I appreciate Dad coming to sing that beautiful song. He was there all the time. Kind of reminds me of Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 5. And the Bible said that Jesus will never leave us nor forsake us. And boy, I'm glad for that, aren't you? He's always there with us, right in the middle of the trials. Always there. Well, if you have your Bible, I'd like you to take your Bible and turn with us again as we continue our study in the book of Proverbs. And we're looking tonight at uh, Proverbs chapter number two, picking it up in verse number five, down through verse number 22. Proverbs two, verse five says here, Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, and of his mouth cometh the knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment. He preserveth the way of his saints. And then thou shalt understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yea, every good path. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we continue our message here, Pursuit of Wisdom. Father, we come today and ask you blessings upon us as we study your word. Thank you for the wonderful song that we've just been reminded. Every trial, every situation we're in, you're always with us. And I pray for those listening tonight, wherever they are. Lord, we're able to go across Facebook and YouTube on the internet and reach many, many people with the message and with the song. And so we ask you to fill us all with your precious Holy Spirit. Open our understanding and illuminate our minds so we can understand what you have for us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, friends, as we continue, we want to remind you that the book of Proverbs is a book of wisdom. If you are having some tough decisions to make, you may want to get into the book of Proverbs. I try to make it a point to read a proverb every day because, uh, or a chapter every day. That way you're reading the whole book every month, <laughs> and it gives you that wisdom to make it and to make good, wise decisions. But we know Solomon is the writer. He, as we've been mentioning, wrote a thousand and put them in this book. He didn't write all of them that are in the book. There's a couple of other authors here in Proverbs, but he did write a thousand of them. Now, he wrote in totality 3,000. And so we know that some of his proverbs are not recorded. But he is writing to us as a father would to a son, trying to explain the ways of the world and trying to help his son as he starts out in his journey of life. And so God is looking down as our Heavenly Father, and he has given us these wonderful principles that will help us live a successful Christian life. Verse number five, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. The pursuit of wisdom is a primary objective. It should be the most primary objective in our lives. Reading, studying, listening to the word of God definitely will make you a wiser person. And so when you are passionate about acquiring wisdom, as you would about getting silver or treasure from a treasure chest, then you're in the right position to get God's wisdom, to get God's perspective about life. When you're as eager for God's insight into life as a prospector would be to pan for gold, maybe an explorer as he is looking for treasure, that hunger and thirst for wisdom is going to help you develop in your respect and reverence for God. So we see the admonition here in the first part of chapter number two in Proverbs. Seek wisdom with all your heart. Then number two, the origin of wisdom. We notice, where does it come from? There's a big difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is the accumulation of facts. I think we should get as much education as we possibly can. Thank God for good schools and teachers 
And we ought to learn as much as we can. But we also know that wisdom comes from God. And wisdom is the ability to put that knowledge into action. It's the ability to make the right decision with the knowledge that we have accumulated. Your brain's kind of like a computer. What you put in, it's in there somewhere. <laughs> and God will help bring out the right uh, perspective when you need it. So the origin of wisdom, of course, will be the Lord. Now notice Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Where does wisdom come from? Well, verse 6 said it comes from the Lord. He will impart that wisdom to you when you are really have a hunger for God. Have you ever prayed to God and asked him for wisdom? I know we ask him for a lot of things in life and we should. But I'll tell you, friends, if there's one thing we need to really be asking God for, it's the wisdom of the Lord. Because we see in James chapter one, verse number five, there is a precious promise found in the word of God that if you ask for wisdom, God promises, I'll give you wisdom. Listen to James 1, verse number 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. That means without limits. He gives bountifully wisdom to those who hunger and thirst for wisdom. And then it says he upbraideth not. That means he never gets upset. He never gets tired of hearing us ask for wisdom. He never rebukes us for asking for wisdom. He upbraideth not. And then it says... And it shall be given him. So if you have a decision to make, or if you're in a situation and you don't know what to do, go to God. Ask him for wisdom. Say, Lord, I need wisdom. I don't know how to make this decision. Lord, I need your help. He may direct you to the word of God in a particular place. And it really helps as you read your Bible daily and as you pray for wisdom. It gets you in the mind, frame of mind that, you're seeking the will of God and he will show you things in the word. I can assure you of everything in the Bible is the will of God. And then if you'll pray every day that God gives you wisdom to make right decisions, I believe according to this promise, James 1, 5, he's going he's gonna to grant your request. And what are you going to do today? Where will you go today? Who will you talk to today? And the list goes on and on and on. And so we all face many decisions every day. And we certainly need the wisdom of God to make the right decision in life. Uh, living is making decisions. If you're not making decisions, you're not alive. You have to make decisions. And so the way to make them is through the wisdom of God. We'll learn many of these little sayings of wisdom as we study this wonderful book of Proverbs. But there might be some certain issues that are not even mentioned in the book. And the Holy Spirit will bring you wisdom in that time of need. And his wisdom is always based on the principles of God. You say, what car should I buy? Well, you may not read it in the Bible exactly what kind to buy. Uh, but it will give you principles for wise business dealings. You say, who should I marry? It may not tell you exactly the person you ought to marry, but it will give you principles to find the right person. I heard about an atheist. He was spending a quiet day fishing when suddenly his boat was attacked by the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> you may not believe in him. I don't know that I do either, but this is just a little joke, a little story. kind of illustrates what we're talking about here. So this man's having him a good time and all of a sudden the Loch Ness Monster comes up and in one easy flip, that beast tossed him and his boat high up into the air and then he opened up his mouth to swallow them both. <laughs> Gonna swallow the man and his fishing boat. And as the man sailed head over heels, he cried out. Of course, now he was an atheist, said he didn't believe in God. But as he was coming down right into the mouth of the Loch Ness Monster, he said, oh my God, help me. Natural reaction. And at once the ferocious attack seemed froze in space and in place. And the atheist hung in midair. And a booming voice came down from the clouds. And God said, I thought you didn't believe in me. <laughs> 
And the man said, Lord, please give me a break. Two minutes ago, I didn't even believe in the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> well, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Oh, friends, you can trust God. He's alive and doing well. Verse number seven, he layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. That wise person stores up wisdom from reading and studying the word of God. And it's in his heart, it's in his mind, that wisdom, common sense, as we may call it, from God, is like a buckler. The word buckler carries the idea of protector, a bodyguard, and it protects us and it guards us so that we can walk with integrity and not fall into the booby trap Satan puts in front of us. How many of you would agree that Satan throws those booby traps out to every one of us. Got a lot of help. He's got a lot of demons. And so they're always trying to get us off course and trying to get us away from the will of God. But if you want to follow in the will of God, read the Bible, stay in the word, stay on your knees and pray for God's wisdom. And God will show you. It'll protect you like a, a bodyguard or a buckler. The word for buckler in the Greek language carries the idea of shield. Somebody who carried the shield around to protect someone. A protector. And it even has the idea of the scaly hide of a crocodile. <laughs> so we see here a buckler, a defense, a ruler, a scale, a shield. So we could say God's wisdom has a way of protecting us from all of these traps that Satan lays before us trying to trip us up, if you may. And it's a defense against the foolishness of the flesh. We have three enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil. And they're all against us. And of course, if you're not saved, the Lord wants you to come to him and he will give you victory over sin. The great pretty British preacher, D.J. Holden, he was scheduled to travel to New York. And he was supposed to have been on the ill-fated Titanic back in 1912. I'm sure you've heard of the Titanic. In our day, they've discovered where it was. They've gone down and dived upon it. Pulled back many of the relics on that ship. So here's the man of God. He's going to go and ride the Titanic to New York 24 hours before the vessel was to sail an alarming condition came to light in his home and it was a problem that he had to take care of and the preacher couldn't take the trip so at the very last moment he had to cancel his trip on the Titanic one hour after the liner had departed all trace of the cause of the cancellation had vanished and the problem had been taken care of, but now it's too late. The ship had departed port. It's already out to ocean one hour later. So he kind of, in his mind, thought, boy, I wish I could have made it. I was so much looking forward to riding on that ship and going to New York and preaching and ministering for Christ. And so as... Time went on, he found out what happened to the Titanic. It hit an iceberg, it went down. Many of the people perished in the icy waters of the North Atlantic Ocean. And so God used that to spare the preacher from a tragedy of shipwreck. Dr. Holden kept that canceled ticket from the shipping company and he put it in a frame above his desk in his office. And he said, God takes care of his own. And God does take care of his own. If you're a child of God, the Lord's looking after you. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. You may spend some nights where it's hard to get to sleep. You may spend some nights where you cannot go to sleep, but God's going to stay up with you. <laughs> He'll be there. He's involved in the life of his children. He is a wonderful father. You know, anybody can be a dad. If you go out and have a baby by someone, you're the dad. <laughs> but it takes a real dedicated person to be a father. Someone who takes time with that baby. 
Someone who takes time to train them, protect them, provide for their needs. And God is our example. What a father he is. He is constantly looking after us, working to bring his purpose of our life to glorify him. He is our buckler. He is our protector, our shield. He is constantly watching out for us. And then you see there in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 8, it says, and what a wonderful promise this is. Listen to this. He keepeth the paths of judgment, and he preserveth the way of the saints. What does that mean? Well, God is giving us that wisdom, and it guards us from the path of the unrighteous, and it keeps us going down the path of the righteous. And he places a hedge of protection around those who are in the family of God. What a wonderful promise that is. A hedge of protection. I pray every day, God, put a hedge of protection around me. Lord, take care of me. Give me wisdom to know what you'd have me to do today. God's admonition, seek wisdom with all your heart. The origin of wisdom, wisdom comes from God. And then number three, the benefits of wisdom. Have you met some wise people in your life? Oh, I have some wise people. I call from time to time and if I have a big decision, I want to get their perspective on it. The Bible said that in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. Thank God for my family. I always want to get wisdom from them. Thank God for my preacher friends. I always want to get wisdom from them. I've got so many in my church I, I like to consult with, talk to, some very wise people. And I've got some friends I've had for a lifetime, very wise. God has kept us in touch. And I thank God for that. So the benefits of having wisdom is found, notice as we start this part of the message in verse number nine. Proverbs 2 verse 9, Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. I mean, when a person has the wisdom of God in their life, he has no problem understanding that which is right and that which is wrong. God's wisdom will keep you on the straight and the narrow road. That leads to life everlasting. Wisdom enlightens you as to what is good and what is fair and always shows you the right path to take in life. And then verse number 10, when wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. <laughs> wisdom and knowledge are pleasant. They keep you out of a lot of trouble. They keep you from ruining your life and they keep you from destruction and harm. Two women came to King Solomon, as we mentioned last week, and one of them had accidentally rolled over on her little baby and smothered it to death. And so before the other mother could wake up, she switched babies. And she took her baby and put her dead baby under the mother who supposedly still had the, a living baby. <laughs> so when she woke up, she said, this is not my baby, you've got my baby. Give me my baby. And she said, oh no, you've made a big mistake. You must have smothered your baby. She's lying. So these women are upset. They brought it to King Solomon, just a young man. And he said, Lord, give me wisdom. What do I need to do? How can I figure out who the right mother is? And of course, God gave him wisdom. Here's what he said. Bring me a sword. I'll cut the baby in half. I'll give this mother half the baby and I'll give this mother the other half. And you know what the real mother said? Please don't do that. She can have the baby. I don't want to see any harm come to the baby. But the false mother said this. Oh, go ahead. Cut the baby in half. I'll take half and she can take half. And you know what Solomon said? I know who the real baby is. It's the one that doesn't want any harm to come to that baby. That's the real mother. And so he gave her the mother back. Uh, the baby back. <laughs> he gave the mother the baby back. I'll get it right here in a minute. But that showed us that God had granted his request because he prayed for wisdom. God said, I'll give you what you need, whatever you'd like. 
He didn't pray for riches. He didn't pray for popularity. He didn't pray for prestige. All the things the world seeks after. He prayed for the wisdom of God. Number one. And you know God said, I'll give it to you. And since you didn't ask for the other things, I'm going to give them too. Because wisdom is number one. And so it's kind of a funny joke. It goes along with that story here. Two women came before wise King Solomon, dragging between them a young man in a three-piece suit. <laughs> this young CPA agreed to marry my daughter, said one of them. No, he agreed to marry my daughter, said the other. And so they haggled before the king until he demanded silence. <laughs> my sword, bring me the biggest sword, said Solomon. And we shall hew this man in half, and each of you can have half of it. Fine, sounds good to me, said the first lady. But the other woman said, oh, sire, do not spill innocent blood. Let this other woman's daughter marry him. And the wise king did not hesitate a moment. Of course, this is a joke. Indeed, the accountant must marry the first lady's daughter, he proclaimed. But she was willing to hack him in two, exclaimed the king's court. Precisely, said Wise King Solomon, that shows that she is the true mother-in-law. <laughs> Wanted to cut him in half. Thank God I've got a good mother-in-law. We have so many mother-in-law jokes, but I've got one of the best. She treats me just as good as she does her own children. Lenora Jones, that's my wife's mother. She has always been good to me. Then verse 11, discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee. I mean, when you have God's wisdom in your heart and you have the knowledge of God as your goal, then you're going to exhibit good common sense and you'll have the insight into solving problems, helping in difficult situations. And then there are some benefits of wisdom, but notice the protection of wisdom. I said wisdom is a protector. It's like a buckler, someone who looks after you. Keeps you out of danger. Wisdom is so wonderful. Notice verse 12. Wisdom will deliver you from the way of the evil man. From the man that speaketh forward things. I mean God's wisdom will warn you against the traps of that evil man. Who would try to pull you into trouble with his words. Have you ever been with someone who would get you into trouble with his or her words? I had a friend growing up. And I had a lot of fun with him. He was a good friend. But he had a habit. He's a little smaller than I was. And I was a little big for my age. And he would always pick a fight. And he'd get me right in the middle of it. Because he'd get with somebody bigger than him and get in a fight with him. Expect me to come to the rescue. <laughs> I finally wised up. And I said, hmm, you're going to have to fight your own fights. <laughs> I'm going to stand back and watch. He stopped that. Boy, that put a stop to it. <laughs> That's what wisdom will do. It'll keep you out of a bad situation. It'll keep you from hanging around the wrong people that would pull you away from the Lord. Verse 13. Who leave the paths of unrighteousness to walk in the ways of darkness? Again, he's referring to that evil man who's left God and who is out in the dark world trying to pull you in with him. Wisdom will guard you and protect you from those who have left the righteous road and turned to the road of darkness. Then verse 14, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the forwardness of the wicked. These troublemakers enjoy doing evil and they take great pleasure in being frauds and phonies. Make no mistake about it, these wicked beings live for sinful thrills and they enjoy violence. Oh, they love to see a violent act committed. Stay away from them. Verse 15, who, why, whose eyes and or whose ways are crooked and they forward in their path. They go down the dead end street and try to pull you with them. But wisdom cries out against this type of behavior and wisdom rescues you from the adulterer, adulteress. Verse 16 talks about it. To deliver thee from the strange woman, even from that stranger which flattereth with her words. 
The Bible calls her old honey lips. <laughs> honey lips. Why? She's referred to honey lips because she tries to flatter you and tempt you into infidelity and unfaithfulness. Oh, she'll tell you that you deserve to have a little fun and that your family will never know anything about it. And she'll promise you the time of your life, but she will put you into an early grave. God's wisdom will rescue you from that temptress, that smooth talking seductress. She is seductive and she is promiscuous. You may meet her on the job. <laughs> you may see her at the store in the neighborhood. Be on watch. Satan's going to try his best to turn your attention from God and your family into a dark pit of destruction. Watch for old honey lips. Don't fall for her temptation. She's only trying to bring you down. Then verse 17, which forsaketh the God of her youth and forgetteth the covenant of her God. She's gotten tired of serving God. She's gotten tired of hearing about God. She's gone the way of the world and trying to pull you in. She may have even abandoned her husband, broken her marriage vows, and only wants to tempt you into a life of destruction and devastation. She forgets the covenant of the word of God, the Bible said, which says... Thou shalt not commit adultery. Now, friends, if you find yourself in that condition, let me just say this. God is the second chance God. He will wash you and cleanse you when you come to him and ask forgiveness. And stay away from that person who would pull you in. He'll restore that joy back into your heart. And that's the way we have to do with all sin. When we turn our backs upon the Lord, 1 John 1, 9 said, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Notice something else about honey lips. <laughs> Verse number 18. For her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead. I mean, when you travel down the road of the adulterer, you're going down the pathway to hell and the grave. It's a road of destruction to all who are involved and to those who are not involved. Oh, what heartbreak it brings to them. The, the innocent wife or husband at home, the children who suffer, stay close to God, friends. That's what he's really trying to say or he's really trying to impress upon us. Let God give you that wisdom to guard you against such a trap. Verse number 19. None that go unto her return again. Neither take they hold of the paths of life. I mean that man that follows her path will never be the same again. Satan uses her to destroy his joy and happiness. Verse 20. Thou, that thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of righteous. Solomon says here to walk with those who love the Lord. Follow the ways of righteousness. Just as the wicked lead you into destruction, the godly will lead you closer to God into a life of happiness and joy. That's why church is so important. I would make it a habit to go to church every time the doors are open. Sunday morning, worship Sunday morning, Sunday school. Come back Sunday night for the Sunday evening worship service, Wednesday night Bible study and prayer. The more the word of God you get into your mind and your heart, the stronger and the more joyful you're going to be. God will give you that wisdom. And as I've said, if you have fallen for her trap, oh, honey lips, oh, friends, there's still hope for you. There's still light at the end of the tunnel. Look at King David. He committed adultery, and yet God forgave him. When he confessed his sin, God restored his joy back into his heart. Don't let Satan tell you it's all over with now. That's how he works. He said, go ahead and do this one time and then nobody will ever know and it won't hurt you. And then when you do it, he says, oh, you've blown it now. God's finished with you. You can never be anything for the Lord anymore. That's a lie straight from Satan. You follow God. You let God lead you and guide you. He will wash you. He will cleanse you of that sin and he'll give you the joy of the Lord and you will learn the lessons of life and he'll give you wisdom. 
So Solomon says, stay with the godly. Stay away from the ungodly. August the 12th, 1969. News article from the San Francisco Chronicle read, the blazing summer heat of the Death Valley area has killed two men and a youth who tried to reach habitation by setting foot across the desert. Three men perished out there in that desert. Arnold Dobson, Harold Mast Sr., and his son, Harold Jr., apparently became stranded there in the barren saline valley of the Death Valley area, had no water with them. The car broke down, so one of the three, they took off on foot trying to reach a house. One of them was found seven miles from the abandoned car dead. Another one was found 14 miles dead. And the last one 17 miles from the car dead. The deputy, Red Landergreen, said it looks like they just went the wrong way trying to find help, trying to find water. It would seem that they had turned into the direction that they had seen a ranch house that they had passed about 30 miles back. However, just one mile the other way, had they gone the other way, there was a grove of willows and a spring with fresh water right there. They were only one mile from that fresh water which had preserved their life. They didn't know it. They went back toward the house they had seen 30 miles back. The paths that we take are important because the path that we take have consequences. If we take the wrong path in life and go down the wrong direction in life, it could lead to some very tragic consequences. The outcome of life is determined by the path that we take. Therefore, choose the right path. Verse 21, for the upright shall dwell in the land and the perfect shall remain in it. The godly is gonna thrive in life those with integrity will last forever and ever. Why? For their trust is in the Lord, not in man. And the wisdom of God always leads us back to seek God. Verse 22, but the wicked shall be cut off from the earth and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. Those who reject God and his word are gonna be cut out of the land prematurely sometimes. For their rock of safety is rejected because they reject the Lord, the only one who can really help them. So what we sow, we reap. And a life of wickedness leads to death and judgment and destruction. Oh, how sad for those that turn back upon God and his holy word and turn back to the ways of the world. Solomon is encouraging us tonight to follow the Lord, the paths of righteousness, Reject the temptation Satan throws at you in life, friends. Stay true to God and he'll always reward you. He'll always bless you in ways you could never imagine. He's been so good to me, much more than I ever deserve. And when you turn your back upon the Lord, you travel in a way of perverseness. It's a down road journey all the way. Thank God we serve the God of a second chance. If Satan has tripped you up in life, you can take comfort in knowing God will forgive you and he'll restore the joy bells and the happiness back into your life again. When we draw nigh to God, he always draws nigh to us. Him that cometh to me in John 6, 37, Jesus said, I will in no wise cast out. You come to the Lord. He won't turn you away. An ill-prepared college student taking an economics exam just before Christmas vacation. He wrote on his paper, only God knows the answers to these questions. Merry Christmas. <laughs> the professor graded the papers and wrote on the note, God gets a hundred, you get a zero. Happy New Year. <laughs> Why? Because God knows everything. Seek his wisdom in order to be discerning in this world of sin and evil. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the time we've had to come together and to pray and to seek the word of God and learn from you today. Bless those who are listening. And Lord, if there be one listening to the voice 
of, of our message. I pray they'll come to Christ if they've never done it. And Lord, they'll know the one who can set them free. And friends, while our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, if you've never been saved in your heart and you're like Jesus in your life, would you pray something like this? Dear Lord, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Save me, Lord. Thank you for dying on the cross just for me. Help me to live for you. Give me your wisdom to walk in the right ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, if you made that most important decision, let us know. We'd love to hear about it here at the Grace Baptist Church.